Hello, and welcome to Make Money with Your Blog Virtual Retreat. I'm so excited you can join me today. This is going to be two jam-packed days of fun and learning. Before we get started, I want to give you a big thank you to all of you who are participating in this class. You are all heart-based entrepreneurs who want to make a difference in someone's lives. So I really thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule to be here. With me today, during these two days, here are the outcomes I will want you to achieve. I want you to get crystal clear on your blogging strategy, discover profitable keywords that help you get found and increase your sales, market your blog so you can share your unique gifts with the world and help more people, make more money with your blog, and so much more. We will get started in just a moment, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview again of the day. From 10 a.m. to 11, we'll do Module 1, which is the blogging strategy. 11 a.m. to 11.30, we'll take a, a minute break, excuse me, a 30-minute break, where you can think about your strategy, stretch, go get a cup of coffee or whatever. Or in the Facebook group, you can also ask questions. From 11.30 to 12.30, we'll get back on the line, and then we'll start Module 2, which is how to find p- profitable blog topics. Then from 12.30 to 2 o'clock, we'll have a break off the phone where you can go and find more blog topics and brainstorm as well as eat lunch or whatever you want to do. So that's 12.30 to 2 o'clock. Then from 2 p.m. to 3 3 p.m., we will get back on the line and start with Module 3, which is uh, finding profitable keywords. And then from 3 to 3.30, we'll get off the phone for a break. And then 3.30 to 4, we'll get back on the line and network a little bit and go over some things for tomorrow. And as I'm saying this time, I just realized that I'm speaking of Eastern time. And so if you're on, like, the West Coast or anything, we're three hours ahead of you. So when I say that time, just subtract three hours. I was going to say both times, but it gets confusing, so sorry. And can you do me a favor, whoever's on the webcast or anything, because I, I always get nervous about these things, can you just type in the chat box or the Facebook group and let me know that you can hear me so that way I know this is not done in vain? Thank you. Another thing is I know some of you are new to virtual training, so when you hang up the phone for your breaks, all you have to do is call the dial-in number, which the dial-in number is 530-881-1212, and enter the meeting ID, which is Seven four two four seven six two four zero pound. Okay, I know some people had technical difficulties getting in, so if you can't get in the first time, just hang up and try again. We tried to get in contact with customer service this morning, but they weren't answering. So maybe on the break, I'll still try to get in get in contact with customer service with them. Anyway, so as of now, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Facebook group, or if you're on the webcast, there's a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen that you could just type the question in there, and I'll answer it either at the end of the call or as they come up. So the first module, oh, another thing is um, I sent you an email that said MMBS Module 1. I want to make sure all of you received it. If you haven't received it, you could just go into the Facebook group and then click on Files, and then you'll see it, MMBS1. And you could just click on it. I think when you click on it, it um, gives you an option to download. You could either download it to your computer or you can preview it and everything. Okay, so if you have any questions, you could just ask them in the chat box or in the group. So let's get started. So the module one is start off with a kick-ass blogging strategy. And I know most of you right now on the line, you already have a blog, and you already have, most of you are on like WordPress anyway from what I saw. So I'm just going to start like what blogging platform will you use? There's WordPress, there's Blogger, there's Tumblr, and TypePad. And I tell everybody who's really serious about getting started with their business, I tell them that they have to use a WordPress blog. And here's the reason why. Because if you use a self-hosted WordPress blog, you own 100% of your content. All the content that you write is 100% yours. Of course, unless you're plagiarizing or something like that, then people can take it down. But if all the content is yours, no one can take it down. Unlike Blogger or sites like Blogspot or something, if you're blogging on Blogspot or Blogger or anything like that, what will happen is Google or 
the search engines have the power to take it down take down your content at any time because you don't have 100% rights to that content. Basically, um, Google – oh, hold on, sorry. That's my boyfriend. On I had to click that off. I forgot to tell him that I was on a call today, so sorry about that. Anyway, but um, if you type one blog, blogger or blog spot or anything like that, well, what happened is that you, there's a – strong chance that your content can be taken away. So if you do a lot of work or anything like that, it can be taken away in a, a second. So I always say use WordPress. And WordPress is really good for SEO purposes and business purposes. As far as Tumblr, Tumblr is a blogging site, but I think it's more for like people who have like pictures and people who don't need to blog about a lot of stuff. TypePad is kind of like Blogger. I haven't heard any bad information about TypePad because it's kind of like Blogger, but um, I would always recommend that you use uh, WordPress. So once you pick the blogging platform that you want to use, the next thing is what do you want to accomplish for, from your blogging? Of course, it will be increased sales. But there's other things that you can do with your blog, like you could drive traffic to your website, build a community, increase leads, get media exposure, or build brand awareness. And all of these things that you want to do to drive traffic to your, your blog will be essentially to increase your sales. But you have to make sure that when you are blogging, what, what's your purpose of blogging? Because sometimes most people, some people don't want to increase sales. They just want to build a community of where people can go and congregate to get information, share tips, ask questions on a certain subject or topic. You know, so the next thing is what will you blog about? Will you blog about industry news, questions from your viewers, hot, hot topics, or piggybacking off the news? And basically industry news is what's going on in your industry. You know, is there a, a certain event coming up, a certain new strategy that is stellar that you have to share with the world? And then questions from viewers is just questions, as I think some people on the phone know, like so, most of us are social media experts and everything. And, like, I just got questions the other day from friends, and they were like, well, Facebook did this change and that change. What do I do? And actually I was on the line the other day, and this is a friend of mine, and um, I – took him to like join.me which is a screen sharing place and he was asking me all these questions about like the Facebook new layout and all that so questions from viewers are pretty um, a, a good good thing to blog about you know and hot topics I think hot topics is the same as kind of like industry news like what's going on in your industry that's hot right now what's trending what's really cool you know you could also do like hot topics you could go with personal events or not personal events, excuse me, pop news, pop culture or something like that and tie it into like basically like, you know, how Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez just broke up, like who cares? But the fact of the matter is so many people are talking about it and trending about it. Like you could take that information and figure out like how can you put that into your blog or whatever. You could say like how your business and customer broke up and compare it to like how Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez broke up. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Uh, okay. So let me know if I'm talking too fast, if any of you are in the chat or anything like that, because I, sometimes I get nervous about that and I'm self-conscious because it doesn't sound like I'm talking fast, but most people tell me that I am. Okay. So now another part is how often will you blog? A lot of people say they want to start blogging, they want to blog, they want to get more money to their blog, but they don't have a strategy. And here's the thing, when you blog, you – the rule of thumb is most people say you should blog every day, but who really has every day to blog, right? So a rule of thumb is if you blog at least twice a week, that should be a, enough for the search engines as well as for your readers to keep coming back for more. So, But it's up to you. If you have the time, I know one guy from Brook Marketing, Nick Stimulus, he blogs every single day you know, because he has the time to do that. But will you blog every day? Will you blog once a week? Will you blog twice a week? Will you blog four times a month? You really have to think about that because some people will say, oh, I want to blog 
every day, but then they don't stay consistent with their schedule. So you have to do something that's realistic for you. So if every day is realistic for you, by all means blog. But if once a week it sounds like something that's more doable, then blog once a, le- a week, but as long as you're consistent with it. Even if you blog once a month, I don't recommend it, but even if you do blog once a month, at least you're being consistent. Though so your readers will expect for you to have a blog once a month, like every Friday, every first Friday of the month, or every last Friday of the month, or whatever day you choose. But always just be consistent with that blog. Rule of thumb, I always recommend at least twice a week. Another thing is a lot of people want to blog, and they think they have to do the blogging on their own, which you really don't have to do. So you have to think, will you blog for yourself? Will you hire a professional writer? Will you have guest bloggers? You know, think about, or if you have a big company or other people in your company, will you have different people blogging for you on your behalf? on different topics within your company. So you have to really think about that, like who will blog for you. Okay. So another thing is how will you promote your blog? Okay. You can connect your blog with social media platforms, and my friend Gretchen Pritz, she'll be on the phone with us tomorrow for our bonus section, tech tech session, where she'll be showing you how to do all that. So when you are ready to promote your blog, she'll show you how to set it up on social media and show you how to set it up so it can get out there to the world. Will you guest blog once you learn how to blog and learn the techniques and the tricks of blogging? Will you guest blog on other people's blog who have your audience? That's a great way to drive traffic and build an audience. Will you join Triber? It's kind of like a social media network for bloggers where you can promote your blogs. Okay, would you join Technorati, which Technorati is um, – a blogging directory. You can list your blog in the blogging directory. So when somebody goes and tries to type a blog for, let's just say, social media or something, or looking for a social media blog, your blog has the ability to come up. You can comment on non-competing blogs. You, you know, sometimes people go and they comment on blogs, and they're like, oh, great blog post, you know. And when you comment on other blogs, you want to make sure that you're offering value and you want to leave it an informative com- comment that is geared towards whatever the author blogged about. Because this way, this is showing your expertise and showing people that you do offer value so they'll come back and to your blog and start getting to know you. Okay. So how will you measure your success? Your average time on your site. This is with Google An- Analytics. I'm not sure if any of you have Google Analytics, but I would recommend before you start blogging or when you start blogging again, get Google Analytics so that way when you start blogging, you could see what blogs are getting the most traction, what blogs are most popular. So basically there's a lot of different ways that you can measure your success on blogging. One is how long are your readers staying on your site? Are they staying on your site for more than two minutes? What blogs are interesting the most? Are you getting links back to your site from other websites that are pointing back to your most popular blog posts? How many page visits are you getting? The nature of your comments. When you're blogging, you know, most of you know that on a blog you have a comment box and people are leaving comments. So are those comments mostly spam or are those comments actually adding to the conversation and adding value? Okay. Shareability, like sites like Add This, Dot com. They add, allow you to add buttons to your blog where you, when, if somebody shares your blog, you can track the analytics and see how many people are sharing that blog with their followers. Uh, again, topics that goes into Google Analytics. When you have Google Analytics, they'll show you basically what content is getting the most traction. So if you're writing about a particular topic and you see that one topic is getting more traction than the other, then that's where you want to focus your attention and start writing more topics about um, whatever popular topic there is. And more importantly, conversion to sales. You know, when you're writing a blog and you're blogging, um, how many blog posts are converting to sales? And to know that, all you have to do is basically ask people how do they find you or your prospects or your clients. Uh, I've done that before. I blogged for a medical spa owner, and she wrote me, and she's like, um, 
Well, I was blogging, but the, here's the story. What happened was I was blogging about medical spa owners because I wanted to attract medical spa owners for social media. So what I did, I blogged like 10 things medical spa owners should not do uh, on social media. And the person, Erica, she had found me through my blog, and she um, read a couple of blog posts, and then she hired me, and she told me, you know, I hired you because you, I found you on this blog post and everything. So usually your customers will tell you, so that's how you measure your conversion from sale, from blogging to sales. Okay. Another thing is um, – when you're blogging, a lot of people don't think about this, and I know a lot of people have trouble with writing. They don't like to write or they don't know how to write. You know, they compare themselves to others. But here's the thing. Like, the, every time I tell somebody when they're writing, write like you're talking to a prospective client because you know your business, and when you're talking to a prospective client, it's not like you're reading, right? So it's just like um, – what language will you speak? And what I mean by that is not like if you're going to speak Spanish or another language. Like you've got to find out like the tone of your blog. Like is it going to be conversational and friendly? Is it going to be more educational where you have like a lot of stats and statistics? Is it going to be funny and witty and people will come to your blog for humor? Or it will be like a serious tone also that has a lot of stats and statistics. It just depends on what you're writing about. But I always say try to keep it conversational and friendly. Act like you're talking to a friend or on the phone or act like you're talking to a friend at, over dinner or something like that. You know, So you have to really think about what language will you speak when you're writing your blog. Okay. Now, as far as writing your blog, you also want to keep it short and simple. You know, you want to make sure that a third grader can understand you. That means just like anyone can read your blog and understand what you're saying. There's some writing out there that they use all these big words, and it's just like it's not necessary. You don't want somebody going to look at a dictionary every three to five minutes um, trying to figure out what you're trying to say, you know. And um, use your personality. I know some people are scared about this, but do you have special words that you say like, I know for me, for example, I say any who a lot, and I say, I forgot, so I'm, my mind is going blank. But I just say, like, different little words um, that people know that no, no one else says. That reminds me of um, a news anchor that I follow. Her name is uh, Juliana Rancic. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's, like, the E! Entertainment host, and she makes up her own little things like Amaze Balls or could you die and stuff, but, like, when you hear balls or could you die, you know that's from Juliana Rancic because those are, like, the terms that she has coined and everything. So whatever your personality is, just use it in your business a little bit. You don't have to get too personal, but you could mix a little bit of seriousness with uh, personal in there to show people that you're a real person and that you have a personality because people will resonate with you and some won't resonate with you. Okay. So if you have any questions at this time, you can go on the Facebook group uh, page and ask any questions that you may have. So I finished a little earlier than I expected. I know sometimes blogging strategy is kind of boring, but the thing is, like, if you don't have a blogging strategy before you start blogging, you're just going to be blogging and naming for nothing. So this is not the most sexy topic about blogging, but it is important and it is crucial to your blogging success. You know, so when we start getting to find the money-making keywords, profitable keywords, and searching for hot topics and stuff, it will be a little more sexier. But right now, this is like the, the boring stuff that no one wants to do, you know, but it must be done. Another thing is, um, before we cut for break, because we're going to cut for break earlier than I expected, another thing is um, block out time for, you know, writing, editing, researching type topics, and ideas and time for promoting. And that, the way you do that is you could create an editorial calendar. And basically what an editorial calendar is, it's a calendar of like your blog post topics, when you will be blogging, when they will be published, where you will be sending them to. Of course, they'll be on your website, but outside of your website, where what other places will you be promoting them to, like social media networks and all that. So you, when you do a blog strategy, you also want to make sure you block out a lot of time for when you're going to write 
edit and research topics and ideas and time for promoting. So that's really important. Okay. So now we're probably going to jump off the phone for a moment. So we're going to take about probably so it's already 1030. I was, I was thinking that this is going to take an hour, but it's not. So we can get back on the line, actually. Let me just see, 1030, 11 a.m. So we'll get back on the phone at um, 11 a.m., if that's okay with you, Eastern Time. So if you have any questions right now, just pop over to the Facebook group or go into the chat. Um, and ask any questions you may have, and then we'll get back on, and then we'll uh, do the second module, which is a little more sexier than the first one, and it's how to find hot and juicy blog topics. So thank you, and I will see you again in about uh, 30 minutes, okay? Thanks. Thanks. 